فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين ما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى um, the topic that i will be speaking about today is going to be uh, what is the islamic ruling uh, pertaining to uh, election and how does islam um, uh, how does it observe uh, these democratical elections and the way i plan be even illahi al karim with the permission of allah to tackle this topic is as follows the first point that i'm going to be speaking about which is an introduction and the introduction is two points that i'm going to be speaking about the first one is giving a correct perception of what it means democracy and i'll be speaking about the stages in which democracy has gone through um the pillars in which democracy stands on and etc so that's the first point inshallah ta'ala and the reason i'm going to do that is because al hukm ala shay'un far'un an tasawwurihi in order to place a ruling on something you have to have what you have to have perception if you don't have a perception of something the ruling that you give will not be in accordance to the reality um the second point that i'll be speaking about in the introduction is what's the ruling of the statement of the one who says and what is the ruling of the statement so i'm not going to be focusing on the person but the statement of democracy and elections are uh, ashura al-islamiyah that it's a shura election and democracy is shura so what's the ruling on that statement and is that the reality the second point that I'll be speaking about after the introduction which is the first chapter basically is mafasid the harms that are in al-intikhabat the harms that are in election because a lot of people they say um that i will go to see that more in details that there are more uh it basically they say that irtikabu aqall al-mafsadatayn there's two harms we're taking the less of the two harms so if we put down the mafasid al-intikhabat the harms that it has and how serious it is that will explain a lot for us inshallah ta'ala the third chapter that i will be speaking about is how does islam and how does the sharia elect appoint a leader what it was the tariqa a sharia the way that the sharia appoints a leader is it through elections is it through this democracy that we're seeing today or is there another way we'll see, speak about that inshallah ta'ala um the fourth i will say the third chapter the third chapter is ash-shubuhat doubts that are put forward to argue for elections the doubts that are put forward war raddi alayha and refuting it and debunking it and last but not least nasaih advices <coughs> advices bi idni llahi al-kareem So let's define what democracy is. Ta'rifu the definition of a demokratiyah. Am the definition of democracy. Democracy is a system of government by the whole population, typically through the elected representative. In Arabic, they say hukmu sha'bi bi sha'bi. The authority and the power is in the hands of who? 
the people. Democracy went through stages. But what it started from was the French Revolution in 1960. 19, sorry, sorry, sorry. It started at 1789. 1789 to 1799, when the French Revolution took place. And the motto and the symbol of the French Revolution was liberty, equality, and fraternity. And then, of course, the American Revolution took place and democracy evolved through time. It evolved through time. But there is something that never changed from democracy. It, con it consistently carried on, which is the pillars of democracy. Democracy stands on three pillars. You have to understand that when the monarchies was taking place in Europe and the churches and religion was unjustly oppressing the people, the French Revolution, what it did was it gave the people power. And the reason for that was what? Liberty to free themselves and equality and fraternity. And they fought against the churches that were oppressing them, that weren't allowing them to advance. So what did democracy do? It gave the people power to legislate. So now you have to understand that the power has been placed in whose hands? The people. Who legislates? The people legislate. Who do they legislate for? The people. They're the ones who legislate and they legislate for themselves. But what democracy did was, are you with me? So the power doesn't go into one particular group's hands and then they fall into the same problem again of the monarchy and the churches and what they were running away from. They divided the power to three pillars, or three branches. And these are the, the branches in which governments, uh, the authority was distributed. The first one is the, the legislational, the legislative system, I mean the legislative, legislative branch, which is basically that, which basically is that the people legislate constitutions that befit them. <coughs> so, are you with me? Then pay attention. Those legislations, which is the second one, they need execution. So the second branch comes into place, which is known as the exec executive, which basically his job is to enforce those laws as it was written by the legislator. Are you there? But then the question, ar the issue arises, which is how are those legislations interpreted and how are they understood? Then comes the judiciary system, the judicial system. system. <coughs> They're the ones who come and they interpret. What do they interpret? They interpret uh, the laws that were legislated by the people. So here what we learned is, and that we understood, is the legislation is done by the people. Are you there? Also, what we learned is democracy is a way of life for a people. It's a manhaj haya. This is the way they live. So, and it's a religion to the to people who did it. And Allah says to us in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Anyone who looks for a religion other than Islam, Allah will not accept it from them. And that person in the hereafter is from those who are destroyed. 
also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he tells us that there are two laws there are two what there are two laws a hukum which is a hukum which is rabbani a godly law and the second one is a hukum which is jahili tawuti which is man made law huh? and Allah said those two in one verse afa hukm al jahiliyyah yabun wa man ahsanu min Allah hukm li qaumi yuqinun Allah says in this verse afa hukm al jahiliyyah yabun are you in desire and in love of a law man made law a jahili ignorant law who is greater in legislation and law than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now we ask ourselves this question which is this democracy is it the law of Allah or is it the law of the people it's the law of the the people the people are the ones who legislate they're the ones who execute and they're the ones who are doing the judicial system Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he tells us in the Quran he says وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Are you with me? And this ayat that I've just read right now which is وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ and وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ it came down on ahlul kitab the people of the scripture they just rejected they did inkar rejection of hukm zani the law of zina nothing more nothing less and they legislated something else for themselves and they became pleased with that and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala placed on them kufr zulm and fisq then now we say what is the what is the reality of a person who places a whole entire system and puts it in place mocks the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't his kufr greater isn't his dhulm his oppression is it not greater is his transgression not greater Allah tells us in an ayah inna alladheena kafaru those who disbelieve وَظَلَمُوا and they transgress they exceed their limits Allah says لَمْ يَكُنِ اللَّهُ لِيَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ Allah is not one who will forgive them وَلَا لِيَهْدِيَهُمْ طَرِيقًا and Allah is not one to guide them on a path except إِلَّا طَرِيقَ جَهَنَّمْ except the path of Jahannam خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا they will stay in there forever وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرًا also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاء شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ do they have legislators who legislate for them besides Allah without permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says to us أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى الطَّاوُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Allah then tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala Do you not see those who claim that they are believers? أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَ They claim أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا That they believe بِمَا أُنزِلْ إِلَيْكَ That which has been sent down on them I mean that which has been sent down on you Muhammad They claim that they believe it And they also claim that they believe the previous religions that were sent down And the previous legislations that were sent down They claim that they believe it But guess what they're doing يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَكَمُوا إِلَى الطَّاوُوتِ But then they go off and they look for legislation through these man-made laws. وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا And they were clearly commanded أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ To disbelieve in it. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ But shaytan, what he wants from them is أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Shaytan wants to misguide them, a clear-cut misguidance. We've now understood that democracy is what? We've understood that democracy is a system where legislations are being done. It is tashri'ah. Legislations are being done. 
who's the one who's doing the legislation? Allah or will, um, um, will Bashar? Is Allah the one that's legislating for democracy or is it the pe people legislating? The people are legislating. This is called hukm, which is ta'ut. And we were clearly commanded to disbelieve in that law. We were told to disbelieve in it. Now, a question, a very important question. And that is, is it possible to bring together Islam and democracy? Can we bring together Islam and democracy? The answer is no. We can't bring Islam and democracy together. The reason is because, number one, the one that legislates in Islam is Allah alone and he has no partners in his legislation. As Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِ أَحَدًا No one associates partners with Allah in legislation. Allah also says, إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ Legislation is only for Allah. Also Allah says, أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah says creation is his. He's the one who creates. And he's the one who gives command. The Amr here means hukum. He's the one who legislates. Tabarak, exalted and great and noble is Allah Rabbil Alameen. Also Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, بَلْ لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ جَمِيعًا All affairs is for Allah alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. All command and legislation is for him alone. Even our messenger doesn't legislate. Independently. Our messenger, he doesn't legislate independently. And Allah Taala said to the Prophet, if you legislate from yourself, I will destroy you. Allah says, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ Allah said to the Prophet, if you said about us and you made legislations, you said about us that which we didn't say. In other words, you made up your own legislations. Allah didn't say all legislations, but بعض الأقاويل, some statements, you made it against us, Muhammad. Allah says, لا أخذنا منه باليمين. We will grab you with our right hand. And ثم لا قطعنا منه الوتين. Your jugular vein will strip it from you. We'll kill you. Muhammad, if you do that. Also, Allah تبارك وتعالى said to the Prophet, and اتبع Muhammad, follow. إلا ما يوحى إلي. Sorry, in اتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي. I do, the Prophet said this, I do not follow except that which Allah has sent over onto me. Also, Allah Taala says to him, Muhammad, inna ma undirukum. Say to them, Muhammad, I warn you. Inna ma undirukum. I warn you based on what? Bil wahi, based on revelation. Hada Nabi Allah Muhammad. Also, Allah Taala He says, wa ma yantiqu ani alhawa. Muhammad does not speak from his own whims and desires. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In huwa illa wahi yuha. Everything which he is saying is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah says to the Prophet, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ Muhammad, we have said the Qur'an unto you. And your job is what? لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Your job is to clarify for the people that which I have said unto you. Not to create, legislate. وَلِذَلِكَ the ulama, what do they say? That when we call the Prophet a legislator, it is majaz. And we expand it and we mention that in our Sharah, in our uh, Kitab, uh, Al Waraqat by Abi Ma'ali Al Jawini. When the scholars use the word legislator for the Prophet, they mean Taba'an. His legislation is in accordance to Allah. Lal istiqlalan. He's not independent in doing so, alayhi salatu wasalam. The second reason, the second reason why democracy and Islam cannot be brought together is because. Even in matters which are sub-branches, it can't be brought together. It's because Islam is a religion which is complete. The second reason why democracy and Islam cannot be brought together, even in sub-branch matters, let alone anything else, is because Islam is complete. And for you to have to bring them together means that Islam needs some sort, some sort of support. And that isn't the case. Islam is already complete. And it's already a way of life. It does not require and it doesn't need it doesn't need for anybody to add anything onto it. It doesn't. And everything in our day-to-day -day life, we will find a ruling in the Quran to implement in our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says to us, 
فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما that you're not true believers until you make the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم your judge any dispute and argument that happened between yourselves you're not true believers unless you bring it to him صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه once you do that ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت and then you don't find it in your heart any form of enmity towards the law that the Prophet passed and you surrender to it and then our Iman is not complete and we're not going to come with what? the Iman which is wajib the obligatory Iman we're not going to be able to come with it unless what? unless we follow the Prophet's legislations we don't find enmity or hate in our hearts towards it pay attention Allah says in another ayah فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ If you dispute one another in a matter فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْأَخِرِ If you dispute yourselves in a matter bring it back to who Allah and His Messenger if you are believers of Allah and the day of the day of judgment Now in this ayah Allah says فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ this tanween is called tanween or tankir. It makes the word indefinite. And we know that if an indefinite is in the context of a conditional, which is a nakiratu fi siyaqi shard, fata'ummu, ama fatufid al That if an indefinite is in the context of a condition, it shows generalization. That's why Allah said fi shay'in. What does that show you? That every single thing in your life, you'll find a law for it. Sah, in the Quran. Why would Allah tell you to bring every single thing back to the religion if it doesn't have every answer for you? Sah? And then at the ending, what did he say? In kutum? Tu'minuna billahi wa liyawmil akhir. If you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. If you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. The third reason why it can't be brought together is because you're not going to be saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to destroy you if you try to bring democracy and Islam together. Allah said to the Prophet, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَىٰ شَرِيعَةٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا Muhammad, we have made you upon a legislation. We've given you rules, we gave you laws, we've given you a hukum, فَاتَّبِعْهَا, follow it. Then Allah says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And do not follow the desires of those who don't know. Pay attention here. Allah is saying there's sharia and there's desires. Hakada. Any law other than the law of Allah is desires. Any law of other than the law of Allah is what? Is desires. And the people who set it are what? La ya'lamun. They don't know nothing. They're jahala, ignorant. Well, if you look at democracy today, every time it changes, right? And it's so sad because guess what they do right now? They say Islam needs reform. Islam is not made by somebody who's incompetent and ignorant that it needs to be changed. It's done by the, the one who knows what has happened, what is going to happen, and that which has happened, if it was to happen, how it would have happened. Why would he need to change it? I mean, why does it need to be tampered with? But your one does, because you can only see as far as your, your eyes can see. Does that make sense? Allah then says to the Prophet, وَلَا تَتَّبِئْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Don't follow the desires of the, those who don't know. Why? إِنَّهُمْ لَنْ يُغْنُوا عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا They will not prefer, they will not suffice you, they will not help you besides Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. When Allah wants to destroy you, those people you have followed in their desires and in their legislation, they won't help you. They can't help you. Allah then says in another ayah, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَكُمُ النَّارُ Allah said to the Prophet وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا Do you guys know what the word Rukun means? Rukun is just to lean. It's not even to fully give in to something. It's just to lean towards them. Allah said if you lean to these people فَتَمَسَكُمُ النَّارُ The hellfire will touch you. They will destroy you. So Allah is saying وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Do not lean to those who don't know. Among those who transgressed, those who've transgressed in what way have they transgressed, brothers? 
they've transgressed to give themselves the authority to legislate. You're a dhalim. You're an oppressive, transgressive individual. Who gave you the rights to legislate? Who gave you the rights? Allah says, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا Don't lean towards the people who are oppressed, who transgress. فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ And then Allah says, وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And besides Allah, you're not going to get ally and support. Then Allah goes on to say, ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Victory will not be given to you. Once you start leaning to these people, you're not going to be given victory. I ask you a question in this ayah. You're not going to get what? You're not going to get victory. Not to surrender to them. To lean to them. So how can you tell me through elections? How can you tell me through elections and democracy you're going to bring me victory? When Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He clearly says this, and the ayah is muhkama. The ayah is muhkam. Also, the fourth reason why democracy and Islam can't be brought together is because even if we did choose to do it, the kuffar will still not love us. Unless we give up our whole religion. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Allah says that the Jews and the Christians are not going to be pleased with you حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Brothers, until you follow their religion. Until you what? Until you follow their religion, the Jews and the Christians, would they be pleased with you? They won't be pleased with you. Brothers, listen today. Are you with me, brothers? Today we have people who are du'at that we would say they are liberals, right? Liberal du'at. In the West, what are they still considered as? Extremists. They've done everything to water the religion for the West. But they're listed as an extremist. The reason is because, the reason is because they are going to consider you as an extremist until you fully walk away from this religion. Until you walk away from this religion. So watering it down is not sufficient for these people. What's enough for them is you fully walk away from Islam and you leave it. Then Allah said to the Prophet, قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ وَالْهُدَى Guidance is the guidance of Allah. وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Are you with me, brothers? Allah then says, if you follow their desires, بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After knowledge came to you. What knowledge? The revelation, this kitab, this sunnah that has come to you, Muhammad, and that you're upon. If after knowledge has come to you, you follow these people's desires, what's going to happen to you? مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِرٍ you're not going to find Allah allegiance from Allah wa Taala, and you're not also going to get from Allah any victory. Are you with me, brothers? So this second ayah also proves what the ayah "Wala tarkalu ilal ladina zalamu fatamasakum alnar wa ma lakum min duni Allahi min wali min awliya thumma la tunsaru." They both mention the same, which is that when you follow these people's desires, Allah wa Taala frees Himself from you. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala doesn't give you any victory whatsoever. <coughs> Allah says in another ayah surah to Muhammad, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ ارْتَدُّوا عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْهُدَى الشَّيْطَانُ سَوَّلَ لَهُمْ وَأَمْلَىٰ لَهُمْ Allah says, those who apostated, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ ارْتَدُّوا Those who apostated, عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِهِمْ on their hills, after guidance came to them. Are you with me, brothers? Pay attention. I, we, there's no point us taking the verses and not understanding it. Allah is telling us in this verse, these people, what did they do? They apostated. And they turned on their, they turned on their hills. After when? It became clear to them. Why? How, how did they apostate? Allah is not going to tell us. الشيطان سوّل لهم Shaytan beautified something for them. وأملا لهم He dictated things, something for them. What is it that he dictated for them? And what is it that he beautified for them? ذلك بأنهم قالوا للذين كرهوا is because they said to the disbelievers ما نزل الله that which Allah has said to us سنطيعكم في بعض الأمر We're going to obey you in some matters. والله يعلم إسرارهم And Allah knows what they are hiding. Look what they didn't, brothers, pay attention to this. 
They didn't say, are you with me, brothers? They didn't say they were going to obey you in everything. Some matters we're going to obey you in. What did Allah say in the beginning? They could happen to them, apostasy. Are you with me? Good. I am, uh, point number four. Sorry, point number five, really, sorry. T- point number five. The reason why we can't bring democracy, are you with me, brothers? The reason why we can't bring democracy and Islam together is because we don't need it. We already have the Quran and we have the Sunnah and we have ulama nasihun. We have sincere advisors, scholars who are within our midst. Walillah, alhamdulillah, minna. We have du'at are calling us to, we have du'at who are calling us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no need for us to jump on the bandwagon after democracy. There is no need for us to. Now, 